A federal appeals court has struck down a North Carolina voter ID law. Civil rights groups have slammed the law since the beginning, claiming it discriminates against minorities and the poor. Supporters argued it helps prevent voter fraud. The ruling comes just months ahead of the November presidential election, where North Carolina is a major swing state. Gloria Brown Marshall is a former civil rights attorney. She's also an associate professor at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and she's here with us now. Gloria, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Uh, explain to our viewers who might not be familiar with this law exactly what it is. Well, after the Voting Rights Act was gutted in June of 2013, a number of states, North Carolina being one of them, enacted laws that would restrict the time when people could register. It would require higher um, requirements for um, identification in order to vote and put other very stringent um, requirements on people to make sure that there was no voter fraud, even though there had been no evidence of such for the most part. And these are some, uh, these new restrictions or these new laws were very similar to what existed before the Voting Rights Act. Very much so. I mean, then you had the poll tax, the literacy test, things like that. So you had to amend the U.S. Supreme Court, I mean, the U.S. Um, um, Constitution, and have cases before the U.S. Supreme Court to bring those rights into line with what people, all citizens, were supposed to be able to do in order to vote. The problem we have now is that the state decided to expand certain ways in which to access voting, allowing younger people to begin the registration process so that when they became 18, they were already registered to vote and ready to go forward. Early voting, for example, so that you're not voting on one single day. Some people look at it as Sunday after church going to vote. Those things were then rolled back with this North Carolina law that was found to be unconstitutional. Now, those who were for the law said that it prevented voter fraud, but you say that there was no evidence found of voter fraud or is it just not at a level that would require some kind of a law like this one? If we dealt with crime based on the amount of voter fraud, we would have no crime. Mm. Voter fraud is minuscule in all jurisdictions. And voter fraud that's based on people giving false identification in order to vote is almost non-existent. So there was not a problem to fix. However, it does undermine people who are poor, people who are in minority groups, other people who are usually vote Democratic. Not always, but usually vote Democratic. All right, let me ask you about this. We've seen other states also push for these voter ID laws. How do these cases influence one another? Well, this was almost a Republican push from these conservative legislative bodies in Texas, North Carolina, and other places around the state. Within days of the June 2013 gutting of the Voting Rights Act in the Shelby County versus Holder case. And so these people were kind of waiting for this entree. And they know that there's going to be this political um, change in the number of people who are then able to exercise the franchise. And so in North Carolina, as opposed to Texas, Texas, they said that there's going to be an outcome that's going to undermine the voting rights for the poor and people of color and, and the elderly. In North Carolina, they said they intentionally passed a law that would underline, undermine those voting rights. Wow. Uh, what happens if and when North Carolina decides to appeal? North Carolina, I'm um, certainly is going to, I'm sure is going to appeal. The case then will actually be first heard by um, en banc, and en banc is the full court, because this court of appeals was made up of three of the judges. They'll have the full court of appeals here, and if the full court of appeals all actually goes against North Carolina again, I'm sure they will appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. This case is, is ripe for that. Wow, uh, really interesting stuff. Gloria Brown Marshall, we thank you as always for stopping by. Thank you.